Hi everyone, this is Neil Wright here, consultant, audiologist and director of Cluax. Thank you for joining me in another demonstration video of our soon to launch Waxcope. We anticipate now the Waxcope is going to be launched in the next, um, I'm going to start uh, officially advertising it in the next three or four weeks. So we are hoping the first training course is going to be um, mid-March, uh, maybe last week of March, but um, I'm just waiting for uh, bits and bobs to all arrive now. Um, Experience tells me don't advertise until everything is um, in stock, uh, but everything is going well. And um, yeah, so uh, stay tuned. Anyone who's um, expressed their interest, if you if you want to express interest yourself, please email info at clearwax.co.uk and uh, we can add you to our mailing list and we will send, be sending a mailing out very shortly. Um, also have some other fantastic news today. So the Waxscope, uh, we've been advised by the UK patent um, agency or office, should I say, that it is going to be granted. Um, so this patent obviously includes the scope of the Waxscope. So we're really, really excited. Uh, it's been a long time coming, actually. I didn't realise how complex patent apl applications are. Um, it's a lot of forwards and back. You have to review other literature, other patents that may um, overlap in some way and um, thankfully there was nothing that um, that met that criteria for us um, and but I, I found it a very very laborious process but a very interesting process I learned loads um, and I actually enjoyed reading other patents it it was really interesting so yeah um, I've just got one more patent pending now hopefully that comes through it's for a, a kind of a unique type suction probe so uh, I don't want to say much more until um, I get some more feedback we've had some feedback already from the patent agency and it's all looking good but um, we will wait to hear from them in due course so this patient um, as you can see it has fully blocked earwax and dry skin in fact they suffer from superficial otitis externa so they have a high turnover of dead skin which is really dry flaky um, the, the skin is cracked in the ear, there's not enough lubrication there, which, and this dead skin then accumulates into plugs of wax and keratin. This is a bit older, as you can see by the colour, it's, it's oxidised, it's darker. And using the wax scope to dilate the patient's ear canal now, the patient's ear canal is quite narrow. Um, so I'm actually at this stage using uh, our medium sized speculi uh, because this part of the ear canal, the cartridge is quite pliable, quite flexible. So I was able to stretch, but um, in a moment, I think I'm gonna revert, if memory serves me right, to the slightly smaller specular where I can go in a bit further. So we've cleared the entrance of the ear canal and the midsection, and then there's just this skin in the anterior recess. Um, so with the wax scope, it's a different principle to the endoscope. So I know I've mentioned it a few times, but it's just really important for me to, to clarify and uh, explain the development behind the wax scope. Um, I did put a video up on my Facebook a, a few days ago as well, uh, comparing the wax scope to the endoscope, but more importantly, comparing it to what most people are using um, in the UK and probably uh, most part of the world actually, which are head-worn microscopes. So there's different visualisation techniques. You've got the endoscope, which for me is um, unparalleled because of the field of view it provides. It's like you're inside the ear itself. Um, then you've got the ENT microscope, which provides a very high level of magnification and also um, Depth perception is different to with an endoscope. With an endoscope, you're relying on monocular clues because you're looking at a screen. With a microscope, you're, you're observing the, the wax with both eyes. So it's very clever. Under normal circumstances, your eyes, both eyes are too wide apart um, to be able to visualise an object in the ear. Uh, so both eyes, is not, it's a neon impossible unless you've got a, an ear um, the size of an elephant for both eyes to be able to see inside the ear to visualise earwax. So what an um, ENT microscope does, it artificially converges your eyes, brings it artificially closer so you, you are able to do that. So, and that gives, you that gives you binocular vision, so depth perception with both eyes, which is quite handy. Endoscope, um, it doesn't, it's monocular vision. You're relying upon the field of view, the shadows, the anatomy, motion parallax, there's many different cues. So it's a misconception that you can't get depth perception with monocular vision. I mean... That's not true because you've always, you know, if you've been watching my videos, you know, I'm quite often on the eardrum. And even with the wax scope, you, you'll see the depth perception. So the wax scope, um, in terms of the view, you could equate it, you could, it is the equivalent, uh, I would say, 
up to the eardrum, because that's what the wax, that's what I've developed it for, um, as an ENT microscope. But the depth perception is completely different. You're relying on monocular views and you're relying on um, focus. So when you've got things in focus, um, that's your depth perception. So you can see in the distance that piece of dead skin that's really stuck um, in the anterior recess. Uh, I've changed the focus so we know exactly where it is now. And actually, you can actually see the concavity of the, uh, the eardrum. So the eardrum, the, the, the northeast region of the eardrum is more lateral, where the bottom, um, so southwest, the bottom left, is more medial. That, that's the oblique nature of our eardrum. It is orientated in that manner. And you are able to visualise that even with the wax scope. So, and... So the difference between the wax scope uh, and the ENT microscope in comparison to the endoscope is the view. Both the wax scope and the ENT microscope it gives you a very magnified view, but it's a very narrow view. Um, so again, even with the wax, you can see that. Again, I'm saying with the depth perception, you are able to see that. But I think with an ENT microscope, it's a bit more obvious. If patients got, again, very narrow ear, um, even with an endoscope, this would be really, really difficult. Um, but we're, we're going to get this out, so I'm really pleased with that. So, yeah, the wax scope's a different view, and um, a microscope is quite difficult to get trained on. They weigh a ton, so they're not portable, they, they're very, very expensive. Uh, an endoscope, um, I would say it just needs much more technical skill to use it, and it's all good and well having an endoscope which provides you with this immaculate, this is amazing view. But if a lot of people are not able to make use of the view because they struggle with the technique, well, the endoscope, it, it, it doesn't matter how good the view is if someone's not able to utilise that. So for years, I, I've recognised that I need to develop something else. So this has been a, a long, long process. 2017 started it. I had a few uh, personal things going on in my life at the time. So I took a back step and I revisited the idea, I think 2019, 2020. And even during the development, we've just been let down by quite a few, uh, well, yeah, we've been let down, um, but if I'm honest, uh, that's helped me because I've learned loads and um, I basically sort of outsourcing certain parts to third party. I've just manufactured it myself, which has actually worked out better in the long run, I would say. Um, now, if you look at my, this video uh, on my... Um, and in fact, I'm going to put it at the end of this video. Uh, I'm going to find it. I'm going to add it on. You will see the difference between the view of a head-worn microscope or loops. Now, some head-worn microscopes or loops do provide you with uh, depth perception because they do also artificially converge the eyes. But guys, the, the magnification level is it's really, really low. And I think that will give you an appreciation um, of why I've developed the wax scope. So the wax scope is not... Uh, it's going to be the next best alternative, I would say, um, if you're not able to use an endoscope and you'd probably be going to, uh, I've got um, a colleague of mine, a couple of colleagues who have got the wax scope already, they're, they're going to be part of the training team and they're finding uses of both. Um, um, I, and actually I quite enjoy using the wax scope, maybe because it's, it's a bit different to the endoscope, I don't know, but I'm quite enjoying it. So again, very in reality, this patient is very, very narrow. So hence why the view, obviously with an endoscope is different as you can get the endoscope, you'll go in with the, in, in with the endoscope. So but these are the more challenging cases. And when I used to use myself, because I did, and that's what inspired me to develop the eye clear scope. When I, if I were using loops in this, I would, I would no way have got the wax off near the eardrum. I probably wouldn't have got that more deeper wax. I just wouldn't have had the view, I wouldn't feel confident. And it'll all make sense when you watch um, the clip. So you can see this patient's ear canal, it's very dry. They've got this otitis extern, it's long standing. It, the patient's tried all sorts of treatment. They, they know to keep their ears dry, but despite that, it is very, very um, dry and flaky. So that's the eardrum. Uh, you can see the it's very vascularis, the handle of malleus. So guys, watch this video Hi, now. I'm gonna stop it's talking because it's got its own audio. Also, you'll see the difference. Bye. Bye. I just wanted to upload this very quick and short video, uh, which compares and contrasts the different visualization methods that specialists can use to uh, see the inside of your ear when removing earwax. So this is the view that you would expect to obtain using really high quality head-worn microscope or loops. Um, so obviously I couldn't record using the um, head loops that I've got. Um, so I've tried to resemble the view best as I can using an endoscope, but it is very similar. I think you'll get a bit more brightness with the head-worn microscopes and you'll probably have a better um, depth perception in terms of you'll be able to see the oblique angle of the eardrum. So the eardrum 
the top right hand corner is closer to us than the bottom left hand corner and you'll be able to see that a lot better with the head worn microscope but the magnification is really poor now this is the view you're getting with the wax scope this is the new device that i've developed and this is a similar view that you would also obtain using an operating EMT microscope. The only difference between the two is with an operating EMT microscope, again, the depth perception, you'll be able to visualise the oblique angle of the eardrum a bit better, I would say, than the wax scope. Uh, with the wax scope, you do get depth perception, but you're getting it using monocular views uh, by adjusting the focus. Um, and this is the third view. This is what you're all accustomed to with the endoscope. So, of course, with the endoscope, you get this wide field of view. Um, I could go closer to the eardrum if I wanted to, to get a bit more magnification, but you don't want to go in too far because you've got the bony part of the ear canal, which can be sensitive. So I hope that gives you some justification of why I've developed the wax scope. So if people can't use the endoscope, which a lot of people do struggle with the technique, they're then using the head loops, which does give you really low level magnification. Um, and obviously with an EN2 microscope, they are very expensive, not portable, and it does take a lot of training to use that. So the wax scope isn't designed to replace the endoscope, but it's the next best alternative. Um, let me know what you think. Take care, guys. Bye.